You know, this is how I earn a living. Huh? Really? I thought you were just doing it for fun. I suppose some people do. Hello, I'm some people. Nice to meet you. Alright, this was something I really didn't want to have to do because I wanted to keep all the side missions contained in individual episodes, but it was going on for too damn long, so here's an additional one. Now that things are starting to settle down a bit, we can finally play Whack-A-Box again. It's all thanks to you. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's this tired looking guy out by the community center, and I heard he was looking for some help. There are little, like many games that you can play in this game, like any good RPG should have, there are many games you can play. And here's probably the strangest one. Oh, hey, Cloud. You're just in time for our favorite game, Whack-A-Box. You want in? It's super fun. The rules are easy. The person who whacks the most boxes is crowned champion of the hideout. We usually don't let adults play, but since you're cool, we're going to make a special exception just for you. You know, for this playthrough, I only went and did this one once. It's possible that there's more rewards to this game, to this mini game, than I received when I went and I did this. Oftentimes, with these kinds of things, the mini games, they throw you in there and you get the chance to do it the first time. And it's pretty easy when you do it the first time. Then after that, it gets more challenging, but the rewards become greater. I didn't stick around long enough to figure out if you actually get a better reward if you do this more than once. But the first time I went through it was pretty easy. And I, I'm not even sure it's necessary to even do this the first time. So, I don't know. A lot of points you get for some of these. It's just you go and you smash the boxes. The 50s will go down in one hit. The 100s take a couple more hits. The 1500s take quite a number of hits. So... You gotta be prepared, to, I guess, to figure out which ones you're gonna want to break. But we're already at 9,250, so and 10,000 was the target score, so we don't really need to go all out. But we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> there you go. We're over at 12,000 now and got 38 seconds remaining. So clearly we won. And that box back there, I guess, will increase the amount of time that you have. So we got 10 seconds additional. There must have been an initial... There must have been an extra challenges to this with greater... Greater prizes. I'll have to check that out. But I left this section of the game behind, so... Hmm. Maybe the next time I play through the game. <laughs> Fun with physics. It is something cool to note, though. Just the physics aspect of this. Because remember back... No, not ten years ago. Maybe a little bit more than ten years ago. Physics, the inclusion of physics in a game, was really something to make note of. Like, Half-Life 2 had the F Havoc physics engine integrated into it. And it you would could pick up items and you could throw it. I think Deus Ex did something like that too and it was actually something pretty significant as far as a gameplay feature but we've reached the point where it's so standardized that we have this real-time physics simulation in this game the box is being thrown around and all that and nobody gives a shit wow cloud i've never seen anyone do that before see pretty fun right play with us again okay All right, now that is something I went and I looked up. The If you complete this challenge on hard mode, the item that you can get is called a transference module, and it's, it's an accessory that your character can equip, and it fills the limit gauge whenever you use your abilities. That is something that I did notice was a little bit different in this game from the original one, was that you don't tend to fire off your limit breaks as often. In the original game, you would gain your limit gauge as you took damage. Now, I guess it's the same thing in this game. I wasn't really paying a lot of attention. But at the end of every fight in this game, your limit gauge gets reset. So in general, you only seem to fire off your limit breaks during boss battles. 
In the original game, your limit gauge would slowly fill, and it could be several battles of regular mobs that you engage, and then kill, and your limit gauge can grow across all of those fights. In this game, it gets reset, so only for long fights where you take a lot of damage do you see your limit gauge top off. I guess this is, it makes a little bit of sense to focus everything based on individual fights instead of long chains of fights because the dungeons are so long you'd probably wear your characters out if you um, if you did it that way but you know it does feel a little bit different because it used to be the way that these games worked was you had your dungeons and you had to prepare your characters for the long slog through the dungeons whereas a game like this and I guess everyone from 13 onward was a little bit more based around the idea of individual fights during these instead of the long string of fights you would be able to replenish your character supplies and all that shit in between uh you wouldn't happen to be a certain merc that's become the talk of the town yep i'm damon little more than a humble reporter with the daily buzz ah uh, that rag the one that's always printing awful rumors about the slums on the contrary my dear we strive to raise awareness of the plight of our undercity brethren. We seek a better future for everyone, rich and poor. Now then, my friends, I find myself in need of your exceptional services for a trifling matter. Are you familiar with the mysterious and notorious... She delivers written declarations to her victims, usually Shinra associates, before divesting them of their valuables. Everyone knows her. Everything she steals, she gives to the poor and needy. Yes, she's got a knack for public relations. Very popular down here as a result. Nevertheless, she is a criminal and a threat to the public order. I've made it my mission to unmask the villain. But the locals have been uncooperative and uncommunicative, to put it mildly. And now that my identity as a reporter has been exposed, my sources have all deserted me. Which brings me to you, the Merc of the Hour, and the man who will serve up my scoop. Ah, well, so Midgar has its own Robin Hood. I guess, uh... Uh, it's a pretty tropey character there. Somebody who fights the establishment for the sake of the poor. So, I guess I can't really blame them for getting too hokey with this, but still. Why, hello! What is it? The guardian angel of the slums? Such a mysterious figure. Always talked about, but never seen by anyone. The angel gets in and out without being noticed and always leaves a calling card. <gasps> Maybe a magician. No, no, it's no magic trick. It's genuine magic. Rumor has it that the angel is a witch. If we're going by rumors, then I've heard that it's actually a monster in disguise. Well, I could talk all day about the dozens of stories I've heard. Do I know the guardian angel of the slums? Well, I don't know much, but I do know she doesn't steal from the poor, and she doesn't kill anyone either. As far as I'm concerned, that's all I need to know. If that's not enough for you, the one you ought to talk to is Marae. Ask anyone, and they'll tell you she knows everything about everyone around here. Alright, well this is a pretty quick quest. We just need to go and talk to the individual people around trying to get some information on the guardian angel of the slums although why cloud is involving himself in this kind of thing i don't, I don't quite buy his excuse good to see you again murray good to see you too Aerith. i'd heard you found yourself a funny new friend cloud meet murray she knows everything there is to know about the slums murray meet cloud he's a former soldier and super strong Hmm, he looks useful enough. The kids have been talking about you. The defender of the secret hideout. And now the hero of the Leaf House is helping the Daily Buzz look for the Angel of the Slums. I am? <laughs> I'm a lover of the Whispered Word. Not that it's any real secret, considering how chatty that Shinra Muck's been. Not looking into it for the reporter. I'm doing it for myself. Call it curiosity, whatever. 
Or could it be you've fallen under the angel's spell like so many others? Anyway, it so happens that I have some information for you. But I'll need a moment before I can give it to you. Why don't you wait with that reporter of yours? If I could offer any unsolicited advice for the developers of this or any other game, lower the sound, lower the volume of background noises and the music when in dialogue scenes. I don't want to have to pay, I don't have to fight to pay attention to what the character is saying. So, any news? Have you tried talking to Marae at all? She told us that she had some information to share. Mirai? As in THE Mirai? The town gossip? I chased her for days begging for info, but she wouldn't give up a single scrap! So how'd you get the old bird to talk? This old bird had a change of heart, that's all. Then quickly, before you have another, tell us! What do you know about the notorious angel of the slums? Has she struck again? Is that it? I don't know anything about that, but I do know where her hideout is. Her base of operations? Now that's a scoop! Where is it? Tell me! Deep in the scrap, at Lookout Point. Hardly anyone goes out there these days. It's the perfect place for a criminal to hole up. Lookout Point! Got it! I'll check it out right now! But before you go, I should warn you about this rumor I heard. About a terrible fiend that's claimed the Angel's hideout as its lair. Oh! Quite large. Lots of teeth. Always hungry. I don't know about you, but I'd not go anywhere near that thing. Oh, well, uh... <clears throat> well, a good reporter knows never to take foolish risks. Uh, plan first, then act. That's every respectable journalist motto. If it's a plan you're looking for, I'd say you have one right here, wouldn't you? So, my good mercenary, if I might impose upon you again, it would be lovely if you investigated Lookout Point for me. The forgotten Lookout Point deep within the scrap. Could it be that this place holds the secrets of the Angel? This is what we need to find out. Okay, when I was actually playing through this section of the game, I felt like maybe Square Enix was just insulting our intelligence when it came to this character of Murray. It's pretty obvious that she is the guardian angel of the slums. It would in fact be a bit of an irritating twist if they threw it in there and it turned out that she wasn't this Robin Hood-like figure in the slums of Midgar. But then I started thinking about it really five seconds before I clicked on the record button for this microphone that maybe I should give them a little bit of a break, the developers of this game, maybe I should give them a little bit of a break when it comes to this because this really is just a quick sort of a side mission. It probably didn't get the full attention of the developers and well it is kind of a difficult balance that you have to strike between having your characters go and or having your storyline be so convoluted and the twist so out of nowhere that it seems like a crock of shit when you finally reveal who this person may be that if it was somebody who wasn't obvious at all like like oh turns out the reporter himself was a guardian angel of the slums and he's trust trying to throw you off his scent or maybe i don't know some other load of horse shit it would come across as really irritating, it would come across like they were lying to us, or they were being really cheap about their twists. That is something that I really can't stand about a lot of game storylines, or, or TV shows, or more uh, movies, where they love this idea of subverting expectations, is a term that everybody uses nowadays. They change something just, or they throw in a twist just for the sake of throwing in a twist even if they didn't really establish the spine needed in the story to make it make any sense they go and they subvert expectations instead they lead you to believe a certain thing is the case and then they all of a sudden throw a twist in there which is different and now not to say that this is necessarily bad i mean M. Night Shyamalan with The Sixth Sense threw in 
a really big one at the end of The Sixth Sense, and it basically made his career, but then he ruined his career by trying to do that with every goddamn movie he made. Also, um, well, things like uh, the HBO series Game of Thrones, the, the guys who developed that show loved the idea of subverting expectations, and, well, let's just say that ruined the end of the series, because, well, you can subvert expectations pretty damn easily. You can just go, well, no, it wasn't this person, or this event isn't going to be done by this person. It's going to be done by this other person. You didn't see that coming, did you? Yeah, well, we didn't see it coming because it didn't make any goddamn sense. So maybe I should lay off my criticism of the developers of this game a little bit. It is a difficult balance to strike between sticking to conventional storytelling types, the obvious person, I mean, it really couldn't be anybody other than who I think it is. And if they tried to make it somebody different, it would come across as cheap. Because they really haven't done enough to establish any other character as being the guardian angel of the slums. But, you know what, no, no, I'm going back on that, what I just said. My mind is getting changed on this all the damn time. Because, I mean, it is a difficult bounce, and I feel like you're landing on the wrong side of it. Because it's obvious who the guardian angel of the slums is, and if our characters, meaning Cloud and Aerith here, are unable to figure that out, then they come across like they're morons. I don't know, I'll probably change my mind a few times on this back and forth in the next minute, so maybe I'll just change the subject. Why the hell? Uh, okay. You know, I can get that... I don't know what the hell this thing is supposed to be. I mean, there are smaller versions of this robot, and I guess it's some sort of a Shinra bot that the Guardian Angel had acquired and set up to defend this kind of hideout. But... This seems like a little screwy, because she sent her characters out here to die, perhaps? <laughs> I don't know. Seems a little fucked up. Speeding things up a little bit here, 300%. These, uh, these kind of enemies, especially the big ones, I'm not quite sure what the proper strategy is supposed to be fighting these kinds of things, because it has that ball attached to its arm, which... With a lot of the other boss fights and mini-boss fights in this game, one of the strategies you can have is to attack the weapon that it's carrying, and you can destroy that, and you reduce its effectiveness in combat. And it kind of makes sense to want to go and do that, because it's oftentimes easier to destroy the weapon than to destroy the entire boss. So, it's a strategy you have to choose from. Do you attack the enemy directly, or do you attack its weapons first? Well, in this... I don't know, that ball it's holding, all it doesn't have a life bar, so I'm not sure how to actually destroy it. I don't know if you can destroy it, so, I don't know. You hit the thing, Cloud's weapon just bounces off, does minimal damage. You can cast lightning on it and do quite a bit of damage, but the, uh, is your, are your attacks effective? You can reduce its numbers, but does it actually have numbers to reduce? Mm. Just hit the thing directly, and use your damn limit break. What am I doing? Why am I using my limit break? There we go. <laughs> Fuck it up! Fuck it up! Something I kept forgetting to do in this game was... ...use Aerith's magic. I mean, she's probably the best mage in the game, and I'm not using her strength. It's kind of stupid. I'm stupid is what I'm saying. The guardian angel of the slums will collect your offering on behalf of the poor. This must be one of her calling cards. I don't see anything else interesting. Let's head back and tell him what we found.
believe it, you found one of her calling cards! This is the genuine article, I'm sure of it, pinned by the angel herself! Hmm. So this is one of her famous warnings. It's an incredible find! Oh, was that all? Hold on. Looks like there's something else. A message. To the nosy Shinra reporter sniffing around, I was planning to teach you a lesson you would never forget. However, by the grace of your mercenary friend, you were spared that lesson. But next time he might not be around to save you. You would be wise to watch your step. Not just a message from the Angel. A warning! If the Merc here hadn't bailed you out, that fiend in the scrap would have ripped you to shreds. <sighs> Sorry about that, friend. Here I was, just trying to help you out. But instead, my kindness almost got you violently killed. Now, now. <laughs> no harm, no foul, right? In any case, I hope this narrowly averted tragedy won't discourage you from sharing information with me in the future. Hey, everybody! The Angel left another calling card! She's gonna rip off Don Corneo! It's about damn time! Don Corneo's no easy mark! I can't wait to see how this goes down! Excuse me, I'm a reporter for the Daily Buzz and... So much for my reward. Here, why don't you take this? Oh, and no need to thank me. Let's just say it slipped out of that reporter's pocket. <laughs> can't call it theft if you're just claiming what you're owed. Am I right? Well done, Mr. Merck. You certainly lived up to your reputation. We probably ought to call it a day. Getting late, huh? You've been working so hard you lost track of time. Had to. The pace sucked. Because they didn't know if you were worth it yet. But now they do. Come on, let's go home. Now, what could our angel want from a man like Don Corneo, of all his many goodies? Or maybe she wants his whole fortune. I wish I could have helped fill the plate back then. Yeah, me too. He's my bodyguard, if you must know. Wait a minute. Those eyes. Is he the one who beat up Reno? And what if I am? 